What's going on, family? It's your girl, Garuti Chastity, and we are back with another Wild Heart Wednesday video, okay? You feel me? And on Wild Heart Wednesday, what I do is that I create a topic that is interesting to me, you know, something that I'm working through, something that I feel like you would be working through or interesting to you, and I just let the wisdom rain down on me. <laughs> hey, that boy! Okay, no, but for real though. No, but that, that's facts, that's it, you know what I'm saying? And so that's why it's called Wild Heart, because I'm speaking wildly from my heart, and it's a Wednesday, okay? Today, we are talking about how to integrate depression. I got my notebook right here, and I'm gonna go and bring it up, because um, I wrote a lot about this. I feel like this video may be a touchy subject for some of us, but we gotta talk about it. We gotta have the conversations, you know? And I know, at least for me, I wasn't, always able to have conversations with my homies about feeling depressed um, we just didn't talk about that stuff you know what i'm saying so first things first let's talk about why i want to talk about this video you know why i created this topic and i feel the need to share and first things first i always feel like at least because it was happening to me i lacked the unconscious reality the spiritual reality and everything that i did i overly identified with my body and once i started to realize that life wasn't just my physical body eating sleeping you know and getting money when i realized life wasn't just about that i was like man i wonder how many of my homies don't know you know that life is more than that and there's other ways that we can tap into that without having to die first you know what i'm saying and so, first things first, let's get to the spiritual meaning of depression. Depression, from a spiritual perspective, means deep rest. When we break down the etymology of that word, it means deep rest. Okay, you feel me? Deep rest. Okay, there are downloads doing, during deep rest. That's the T. For some reason, we just, I feel like when we get in depression, we focus so much on not wanting to be there that when we're there, we don't take full advantage of what's happening. We're not in our bodies, we're in our heads, right? I've been saying this a lot because I've been doing a lot of oracle readings in the past uh, week or so. Um, but, I think of what I was gonna say. When I said I was gonna say it, it went away. Yeah, hopefully come back to me. Anyways, okay, so we are taught to eradicate and get rid of depression. A lot of times when we get into those modes and people want to help us, the first thing they want us to do is get up and change and like kind of just hurriedly, hurriedly get out of that feeling of deep rest. But that's not what we're meant to do um, at all because no part of the self likes to be denied. And this is very, very important. This is why I titled the video, How to Integrate Depression, because you don't want to get rid of it or create this sense of separation even more because we already are separated by so many things or we all suffer from the illusion of separation from so many things the one thing you know that you do have control over is the deep rest parts of you so the parts that aren't moving fast that aren't conscious so sometimes they may look like metaphorically undeveloped creatures you know what i'm saying darkness icky things you know what i'm saying and so those parts of you are meant to be there so that you have fuel motivation to rise to your infinite potential, right? And so if you work to eradicate those things or to shun those things, you are excluding a significant part of yourself, just as significant as your light, your love, you know, your peace, your compassion, right? Those things have to have an opposite because that is what creates experience. So the idea is not to eradicate them, therefore you can polarize yourself to either side, i.e. have a preference, which is what we're taught. You know what I'm saying? We're taught to view things from a perspective as good or bad, right? And when you do that, 
right? Those things that are necessarily bad aren't really dealt with. They aren't really looked at, right? Because it has this title. And therefore, because it has this title, it means we can't get down with it. And that's not the truth, right? You're supposed to uh, look at that monster, I was about to say, and I chuckle because I tell a story of, you know, what if you having a dream, right? That's a smith. What if you having a dream, right? And you getting chased by a monster and that thing look ugly and it's just chasing you and you keep running. Meanwhile, the monster like, hey cuz, bro, ain't nobody trying to scare you. I'm trying to tell you some information. But you too busy looking at how ugly it is that you won't slow down. You won't take a beat. That might be your cousin. But just in this turn, in, in this idea or this metaphor or this, or this awareness or this realization that everything having a conscious experience under the name of god source whatever you call it they don't we don't all share a same physical makeup right so when you're in this dream world which is a still a certain certain type of reality right you something in there could be communicating with you but it don't gotta look like you in order to be valid in order to be good it don't have to look like something recognizable for you to be in a good pal you know what i'm saying you can be be curious being defensive is labeling thing things bad or negative in any type of way that's what defensive is you see what i'm saying and so the idea is to not work to eradicate you feel me? The idea is not to eradicate depression. I'm not gonna fix my mouth to say there's nothing wrong with depression because that is not true. In the reality of it, in the physical reality of it, you know, depression feels uncomfortable in this suit. It is not a comfortable feeling. It is not something that's easy to work through. And so it takes a lot of courage to overcome depression. On a spiritual level, this is what I'm speaking to. You know what I'm saying? We could move through depression a lot faster physically if we had a hold on the mental, emotional, and spiritual taxing that it takes on us. But we're taught to focus more so on the physical aspects of how it impacts our life instead of getting to the root cause so we can really get to work out here. We, we, we are taught to deal with the symptoms of things. You know what I'm saying? Right? And so last but not least on my why. You know, all of these things that I've been saying is why I created this video. The last thing I need y'all to know is that when you take that route that we've been taught naturally, and don't get me wrong, I've taken that route because that's what I that's what I had knew. <laughs> that's what they had taught me. That's what my conditioning said. This is the story. This is how I work. When I realized, like, oh my God, they so full of shit. Then I started studying studying spirituality. And then start putting two and two together and was like, oh, y'all play too much, cuz. You know what I'm saying? I spent a lot of time blaming them, upset at them for why would you do that? Why would you, why wouldn't you go out of, talking about my parents, why wouldn't you go out of your way to do better, to get me better? Like, what is this? You know, different things, small things, blaming. And then I went through different phases of realization and grief, like all of that, bro. I went through all of that, right? And my last little piece of my why, because I went on a rant real quick, my bad, is that I need you to know, family, that pain craves more pain. And so, like I said before, no part of the self likes to be denied. And so when you deny a part of yourself, it don't sh shut up and sit in a corner forever. It's going to come back up, i.e. getting triggered. And what does it do? It creates a scene so you can see it. It creates more pain so you can see it. That's what a trigger is. It creates more pain for you to see it, hoping that you gonna take care of. Cause that's how you get out of this physical dimension is that you learn your lessons and you take care of the emotional, mental, and spiritual. You don't get caught up in the physical. The physical is real, but it's also a trap. It's, it's better stuff happening in them other three areas of existence that I named, but they all work together. It's four of them, physical, mental, emotional, and spiritual. And they build on one another, right? Physical is the very first one. 
It's the densest one. It's the first level, bro. And we get caught up there. We were taught to live and make glory here. But the glory is the last one. It's the spiritual because that's what you are. You are a spirit inhabiting the suit, having a human physical experience. But the true part of you is that non-physical part. And if you don't know how to work with that non-physical part, you'll experience things like depression simply because you're not working with the most integral part of you the proper way I would also say on an emotional spiritual level depression is when you are not appreciating the most important person in your life which is you which is you it's like this is what's going down family in this car right now called chastity Guruji chastity this is a vehicle a vehicle of, of experience the experience that's happening is on God's behalf it's a little flicker of God that came down here to get information and somebody named it Chasdy, right? My mind is the passenger of the experience. My soul is the driver and this physical body is the car, okay? It's the car. Now, what's happening during depression in you know, some type of metaphysical gamey way, break me, follow me now, is that my mind who is the passenger in my in the experience is in the back seat throwing trash at the driver throwing trash and the driver is like what is this the driver don't know nothing about trash and garbage and fast food and eating and getting down like that it's like what is this and so it just get compiled on and compiled on next thing you know the driver can't drive the car right and it's stuck Sitting around spoiling food, which is i.e. thoughts. The thoughts that you think, the things you're feeding yourself, the things you're feeding your mind as it's having the passenger experience that is you. The conscious experience that is chastity. Okay, that is Ruji. You feel me? Follow me now, family. So this is why I'm, I'm, I am creating this video because I need my brothers and sisters to live beyond their physical bodies. I need you to see deeper into life beyond your physical bodies. And if ain't nobody gonna break it down to you, I'm is. I'm is. Let's go. Okay? So now that we know why we're here, let's get into the three tips for integrating depression that I found to be relevant. This is not, this is not actual factual. Y'all come here from my perspective, right? In my reality, this is what's happening in my reality. So I'm gonna tell you the truth. In my reality, I listen to other people, right? But I don't take advice from nobody unless I summon it, unless I specifically ask. Most times, I like to hear other people's perspective. Perspective is nothing more than looking out the window. We could all be looking at the same scene, but the fact that your window is 10 floors up and two doors to the right makes the perspective totally different. And it's that that I love. And it's that that I want you to take away from the Cousin Ruji experience, family. You don't have to follow what I say verbatim in order for it to work in your life. That's not what we're doing here, bro. That's not what we're doing. We here because I'm not doing anything new. You already got this information. You have access to this infinite wisdom just like I do. You feel what I'm saying? Right? But you may have other things on your agenda, right? Because we all have the same mission, which is to love. Everybody's purpose is different, which is go, which is how you go about being that love. And so your purpose might be different. This might be my purpose, and this might how you get down with the get down, and you might be supposed to be teaching me something else. You see what I'm saying? Right, but you don't always have to follow what you hear other people say verbatim. In fact, you can't because you are your own unique expression of consciousness. So when you hear these tips, don't take me for fact and then come get mad at me. And then when I fall from grace or do something crazy, you'll be like, oh, she will lie. She a slucker and go talking about me crazy don't do me like that i'm just a light right i love to say that in my oracle readers i'm just a light point now like look at that over there y'all look look, look 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 get that check this out check this out that's it i'm just good at my job but sometimes i need to shine my own light in my own area that's why i make these videos so i can hear it back and do my own healing with y'all you know what i'm saying but look that's okay let me quit come on man come on complain man okay look Three tips for integrating depression. Number one, search for feeling over thought. Get out of that, man. You gotta learn to 
trust your body. Trust that your body not is it's not gonna be overwhelmed. It's not gonna make a scene. It's not gonna let you down. Trust in it. You know, listen to it. You see what I'm saying? Inside your body is your inner child. You see what I'm saying? It's your inner child. And I, again, you probably done heard this example, cause, but if you got a kid and you sat down and eat dinner with your babe, right? And you put the food on the table and your babe just throw the food in the air. You ain't gonna say, oh man, why you always ruining my life? Why we can't just sit down and eat dinner, man? What's wrong with you? You would not approach your child like that, bro. <laughs> you would not. You would be like, oh my God, hold on. What's, you okay, cuz? What's going on? Did I burn it? Is, was it hot? You okay? Like, you gonna be inquisitive. You gonna be curious. You gonna, you not gonna be defensive. Right? And that was a prime example. But tell me why that's how you treat yourself. Tell me why this, that's the game, the mental game you play with yourself. You do a mental tug of war, tug of war of this or that, tit for tat. If I do this, this will happen to me and then I won't have no money and I'll be homeless. And, bruh, you know how I know these stories because I used to do that to myself. That is very unloving. That is what we call violence. <laughs> you feel me? That's like somebody punching you in your face and your nose bleeding and then they look at you like, what you crying for? Why is you doing that? <laughs> you feel what I'm saying? If you wouldn't treat a child that way, don't treat the child that lives in you that way. Call your soul, call the peace of God that lives in you. Why is you treating God like that? What God do to you lately? Besides bless you, besides give you life and you around here you round here got the nerve to say you won't got time to be in your emotions. What? The disrespect. Them emotions is a gift from God for you to experience this. Right? It's a gift, cuz, and you got the nerve to say, I don't got time to be in my emotions. I give you one better. Maybe you don't got time to be in your emotions, but you got time to harness them. You got time to feel them. You got time to know them. This is what the ancestors meant when they said study thyself, which is it meant your emotions, right? You need to be able to experience life and know what's going on, how to use your, how to harness your gifts and use them for your benefit. But if you don't got emotional intelligence, don't, don't get mad at God. God gave you the tools for that to go down. You feel what I'm saying? So search for feeling over thought. Okay, family, search for feeling over thought. Number two, accept and don't judge. That's the whole point of emotions. They are irrational. They come from an unconscious part of you. Unconscious mean hidden, unseen. If you don't see it coming, of course it's going to be... You ain't gonna make sense of it. But when you try to make sense of it in your mind, you can't appreciate the gift. You are not gonna know where it came from. That's the whole point. If you knew what gift I was giving you, would there be a surprise chicken head? No, it wouldn't. Emotions work the same way. So again, get some emotional intelligence, right? Emotional, get, just get some emotional intelligence. Get curious about it, right? Accept and don't judge the gifts. Be like the little babies who get a banana and be like, oh my God, it's a banana. Be like them babies, right? So when God give you a gift and a challenge or something that maybe you didn't want, want right then and there, i.e. a banana, make it shake, okay? Make it shake. Unless you allergic to bananas, then drop the banana and, and do something else. But you know what I'm saying? Don't run away from a challenge. That's not the point. The point is not to always not have uncomfortable experiences. You know? Courage and faith and fear. Right? Fear can't even live where courage and faith live. So let me go and fix my mouth properly. Right, because what I was going to say is that courage and faith live in that split second in between choice. When you choose, when you simply say, this is what I want and this is what I'm going to do. Because God dwells within you, as long as it feels good, God is agreed. So you don't have to worry about 
is this what God want me to do? Go on and drop that. And so all you got to do is make a choice. The moment you introduce indecision, you then mess up the plan, buddy. Come on, man. Right? And so once you choose, you have the thought. You get the feeling like, yeah, that's what I'm going to do. We're going to go and do that. It feel good. Faith is nothing more than saying, this is what I have said, and I'm going to keep doing it. The little God within you wants to experience what you just said. But if the little God within you came down here waving the magic wand at every single thing, at every single challenge, it would never experience anything because it would just say, poof, there you go. Why would it do that? And so when you say, when the little God within you has a desire and the big God in the moment, which is your mouth, you consciously speak and say, this what I want to do. The big God of everything said, okay, man, let's go. Boom. Challenge number one. Let's see if we can do this. Right? But we too busy. As soon as God say something to you and say like, okay, man, let's try this out. You say, you all... You, oh, it's too hard. I'm tired. I can't do it. Like, bro, God was like, cuz, we, we just started. Like, I thought you had said this. This what you wanted. Like, I, it's no pressure, buddy. Okay. Like, bro, it's the, it's, work with me now. Work with me now. It's the same thing, cousin. It's the same thing, cousin. Okay? So look at it. Look at it. That's tip number two. Number three. Realize that this is meant to happen. Life is an ebb and a flow. Okay? God lives inside of your darkest moments just as much as God lives in your glory. And I hope you see how everything that I have said from the moment that I opened my mouth on this video is going hand in hand. You see what I'm saying? Because let me tell you why that's important. Because I'll be stressing out mentally like, am I writing everything? Is this going to make sense? But all I got to do is just put down the desire. Show up. God got the rest. The how is going to make sense. How is going to flow. God got the rest. I don't know why. God ain't on the poster, but you know what I meant. Here, it's everything. God is, is existence in itself. My, like, the air I taste the air I breathe, it's all of it. It's all of it. It's all of it. God is all of it. Source is all of it. You see what I'm saying? And so all I got to do is show up. I don't have to worry about the how. As long as I stay true to being loved and saying, you know what? I just want to express myself. And if that's a byproduct of helping someone else, let's run it. And I'm going to do it with excitement and curiosity and love in my heart. That's all I got to do. I did my part. I wrote it down. I wrote down my intentions and all I did was come and show up and everything that I have said since I opened my mouth go, it's comprehensive cousin, it's comprehensive. Okay, so the last one is the third tip is realize that this is ebb and flow. The only thing that's constant is change. That's the only thing that you can bet on is that something is going to change. So stop spending wasteless energy throwing your hands up and having a temper, temper tantrum with God by keep saying everything is difficult. Duh, we know that. Stop saying that. Even I get sick of saying that sometimes. But uh, don't get me wrong. I say it. I will be the disgruntled spirit I sometimes feel. But I know we don't, we don't stay there. Right? You know how your mama lets you cuss, but I watch your mouth. Come on now, get it out, but watch your mouth. You feel what I'm saying? So let's go. You feel me? The experience, the spiritual experience of depression worked the same way, fam. It worked the same way. So boom. Before we leave, now I didn't really, I, I feel like I didn't talk about some heavy things. I want to talk about some really quick tips on this outro of what you can do better right here right now in this present moment first things first first things first spend 17 seconds creating an intentional moment that feels good i learned this from abraham hicks in order to manifest you have to at least 
be able to hold a feel good moment for 17 seconds. If you can't hold, a, if you can't live in your body for 17 seconds, you gotta start there. Start there. And once you can start there, start adding more time. Start, and add, start adding thoughts to it. But just, it's okay if you practice something for months on end. Everything don't gotta be a fast learning curve. You feel what I'm saying? But work on them 17 seconds and just say, I'ma just feel good and be in my body for 17 seconds. And it might feel like a roller coaster when you jump in here. That don't mean you're doing it wrong. That means you're doing it right. Sometimes I be, sometimes I gotta open my eyes and grab on because I'll be like, whoa, Lord, what's going on in now? But I go back in. So get them 17 seconds in, cuz. Tip number two, real quick. Journal more often, okay? At least once a week. Back when I was dense, I used to be like, don't nobody need that. That's not helpful. I don't got time for that. Which, whoa, whoa. The things I learned about me doing journaling, about how I really feel sometimes, right? Get it out doing journaling because here's the T. Evil lives inside of all of us, but you don't have to let that evil take hold of your hands or your mouth. Okay, and one way to practice not letting it do that is by journaling. Okay, last tip practice gratitude more and focus less on the constant change because, again, we already know that the only constant is change. We don't got to keep talking about it, you don't got to keep focusing on it. If you keep focusing on it, it's gonna make you mad. That's like looking at a plant and watching it grow, it's gonna drive you mad. Just go and get up and go on about your business, water it every now and then, and go on about your business. Talk about change and Sometimes if you got to whoop and holler and tell God what's going on, you do that. But go on about your business. Because God back here cooking up the major plan for you. Go on about your business. Don't be down here messing with grown folk business. You know what I'm saying? Go on be a kid. Stay in the kid's place for once. Go on and frolic and play and figure out what make you happy. And let God handle the heavy lifting. Because I don't know about you. When you feel like you take the world on your shoulders, that heavy lifting is your responsibility. Then. And I, I'm too pretty for that. God can handle that for me, honey. Okay. God can handle that. I want to play. I want to experience. I don't want to worry about the how. That ain't none of my business. Because when I take that weight on my shoulders, I, I start feeling physical ailments in this human experience. I get knots in my back. I get TMJ, locked jaw, for real. I have sciatica, sciatica issues. You feel me? Like, stop playing. I don't need them problems. I'm too 